Welcome to Mission Control, a podcast focusing on executive directors and nonprofit leaders and how they make positive impacts in their community. I'm your host, Paul Schmidt, and I'm the owner and creative video strategist for Unidus Multimedia, and I am here with Emily Mara, who's been on the show before in a capacity where she was with a group of folks, but now we're here with her solo. So Emily, tell me a little bit about who you are. Yes, thank you. So my name is Emily, and I am a development associate and a relationship specialist with the United Way of Genesee County, serving Genesee and Shiawassee counties. At the United Way of Genesee County, we are the catalyst for producing better results faster for our community. We work with our partners to surround children, individuals, and families with resources they need to succeed at all stages of their lives. We invest in partnerships that create real impact. We use data and evidence to fund over 150 programs that leverage more than 15 million back into the communities that we serve. Our work goes far beyond raising money. In the past, in the last year, together we enrolled over 500 children in high quality early education programs. And together, 62% of our youth in the United Way funded programs earn passing grades. Together, we connected over 29,000 people to resources and services that they need through our 211 service line that helps with our Alice population. So um, we do it all together though, right? It's really United Way work. Um, and it's about those who are employed um, throughout the county or special events, just giving a little bit, five cents, 10 cents, $5, a cup of coffee, what you would go um, through Starbucks or through Foster Coffee or some of our awesome coffee shops, uh, just taking one, of those stops a week can go into collectively coming together to really fund some of our most important programs that people wouldn't have access to if it weren't for us all together. I know it's it's just amazing work. And what I what I really like about the work that you're doing there is the is your title relationship specialist. So I've never heard that title before. What exactly do you do within all of what United Way brings as that role? What does that mean? So I work with our funding partners. So that's um, the funders would include different businesses throughout mostly Shiawassee County. Now I, I transitioned to be just Shiawassee County, uh, which I'm really excited about because I can focus so much more of my efforts on making an impact in the place where I was born and raised and uh, that means so much to me. So I work with business owners, I work with employees and I talk about what they are interested in. How do we do a give back day that means something to the team members and means something to an organization that we have within this area. So, um, you know, we have service in a box projects which I'm able to bring to businesses and employees can engage together in a very thought provoking and mindful opportunity to do a give back to one of our local charities. Um, and off the top of my mind, our service in a box project comes to, to forefront because we've done um, really great opportunities of creating. It's kind of like a backpack. I actually have one right here. It's a clear bag. Um, we partner with Ally Challenge over in Genesee County to do some really great work over there. But these bags are then um, given to youth with a blanket that's a tie blanket. So the team members get together, they cut the blankets, they make the tie blankets, they roll them up, they put them into the bag, they do a build a bear, like a stuff a bear opportunity where we have skins and we have the insert that you would just kind of fluff up and you make a teddy bear that goes in there. Um, also a coloring book, crayons, toothbrush and toothpaste. And those go to Voices for Children, those go to Safe Center, those go to our first responders. Um, they go to American Red Cross where families have been devastated and have nothing. And especially when it comes to children, our coping mechanisms when we're younger are so much different than as we age and we understand how tragedy is kind of a part of life and we just have to persevere and get through. But as a youth, when something traumatic happens or you know you are violated and you have to be taken out of your home by CPS this is just something that's given to the children um, as their own you know and, and they can cuddle with the blanket they can have a teddy bear 
Um, but it's talking about, you know, why do we have to do these programs? It's getting the employees talking about how can they get more involved in different um, nonprofit agencies or just philanthropic work. And that's one of the things I love about being a relationship specialist is that anyone, any of us, we all have something to give. Um, it may not be financially that I'm able to physically give something, but I can work with my hands and I can take an old t-shirt that I cut up and I can braid it and then donate those to the Humane Society for dog toys. Um, you know, it's thinking about repurposing things that we have in our everyday life and maybe putting together a donation box of items that you have that are kitchen things that you've got eight can openers, right? Like how do we all of a sudden find ourselves with so many can openers, but some of our most vulnerable populations who are going to food pantries don't even have a can opener. So giving them a can of something that requires a can opener to open it, you know, put together those, donate then to Catholic charities, just somehow find a way to be involved because it's, it's not only rewarding, but it also allows you to see so much outside of your own world and your own perspective. And that, you know, we, we are in it together. And if we don't help raise up the lowest, then, you know, we're, we're not doing our, our due ju justice for our community members. You know, I agree with that. And what I, I like about what you're saying is, is like you have these bags where you're giving practical items. Um, mm -hmm. did, did Was that something that you came up with or was it something that you heard about and, and you just like kind of like made it your own within the area yet you work? How did you come up with that idea? Because that's the first that I've seen. And it's not like I've not shied away from fundraising efforts in my career, but that's that's a really cool idea. Thank you. So that was actually our service team. Um, we have a wonderful group of really passionate, intelligent individuals who are constantly thinking about finding a problem and, and figuring out some sort of solution or something that's going to help in that situation. So over in Genesee County, um, similar to these comfort care kits, um, our director of operations and our, our service team lead, um, so Jamie Lee and Diane, were talking with um, Chris Swanson, who's the sheriff over in Genesee County, and they have a homeless population <clears throat> that police officers and first responders are, are constantly coming into contact with. So they created a, a homeless care kit. So it's a, a waterproof, small kind of... Um, no bigger than I would say, you know, like a, a normal kind of fold like this, but it's got a zipper up at the top and it's all waterproof. They put in a deodorant, they'll put in um, a hand sanitizer, they'll put in a jerky stick or um, a cheese stick, they'll put in toothbrush, toothpaste, just personal items that, again, many of us are able to go to the store and get at our, our convenience, but being homeless put you into a whole different sphere of, of difficulty that just trying to navigate day in and day out. So giving these to the first responders to the, um, the youth corporation that goes out for street outreach and actually is working with our homeless populations to try to make sure that they have basic need items. Um, you know, it's just, it's seeing a problem and trying to find a solution, but also how can we involve community and businesses to do the work through volunteerism and through corporate social responsibility to to make sure our whole services are, are fulfilled round, right? So our employers and our employees are taking care of our most vulnerable people sometimes. That's, I mean, would you say that this is one of uh, uh, your favorite projects that you've worked on? Oh, or... the service in a box project? Yeah. But, and, and it's great because we really bring them in a box and we 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 have you know sheets that they can just have reflection time ahead of time and then after the um the activity is done they can have post reflection and they can talk about how doing this made them feel and you know maybe they know individuals who could benefit from these. I We do a lot of things with our local chambers and uh, we went to the Durand Area Chamber of Commerce recently and we set up a table that we designed, which we also did for the Shiawassee County Chamber. Um, but there were so many 
grandparents and parents that were excited to take a comfort in the care bag home to um, their grandkids because they just said, oh my gosh, it's the most wonderful thing to think about traveling. And then hearing back from them two or three weeks later after the kids got to go on a vacation and they loved the bags, they loved the comfort care kits. And, you know, these were well-off children that just got a really cool bag to be able to go on an airplane with. And they, they loved the, the teddy bear and the blanket. And it's just, yeah, it's really, it's, a, it's a blessing for me to do such important work that connects so much of our community together. And then speaking of that, there was an organization that you were working with uh, just for a short by time, but I'm sure it did a lot of uh, help was Shiawassee Hope. Could you talk a little bit about that time? Oh, gosh. Shiawassee Hope is an amazing organization that does focus specifically on a population, <clears throat> excuse me, that is um, a trailer park on 52 in Shiawassee County. It is one of the most underserved populations. Um, there is generational poverty um, that is experienced in the neighborhood. Um, also, unfortunately, a lot of police calls may happen for domestic or abuse or, or sexual or violent abuse. Um, but we see grandparents or uncles and aunts and uncles and, and, and very large community members or, or family members gathered in this this community and the owner of the uh, rental units, you know, it's a trailer park and the trailers are not kept up. They're not, some of the floorboards are falling through in the bathrooms. I mean, they're, they're really just a community that is really in need. And uh, Marlene and Shiawassee Hope, they um, rented one of the units, one of the trailers, and that is their impact center in the community. And so instead of seeing, okay, we have a transportation barrier, we have childcare barrier, we have, you know, X, Y, Z barriers in this community development. And instead of requiring them to come out for services, Marlene is so focused on making sure that the community is met where they are and that their needs are fulfilled. And so, I mean, even to the point where a pantry was put in the impact center and they do family meals <clears throat> once a week on Thursday nights where, you know, Marlene will cook for the whole community and people will come together and break bread and see their neighbors and have wholesome times together, right? And play on the swing set and, and have communication with their neighbors that's not maybe yelling or arguing or it's, it's just a really great sense of community that she brings with Shiawassee Hope. And they recently, um, over the past few years, acquired an, a church within downtown Owasso. And uh, I know that they've just grown with the community they've served. They have so many more individuals who understand um, what poverty is and, and how it exists and how do we help and how do we understand and come to the community with compassion instead of disgust and frustration and just, you know, just clear barriers between sectors of, of humanity where really it's, it's, we're all in it together. Right. And that mm -hmm. goes back to the United Way slogan, like together we work to do this. And Marlene does a really beautiful job. And um, the whole Shiawassee Hope organization is, is a very valuable one for those who maybe don't have a voice or don't know where resources can be found or have limited access to internet. Um, just all of the things that, you know, new technology and first world brings. Um, there's a, there's sometimes a, a very big distance between populations. You know, hearing you talk and how you've positioned yourself as, as like kind of a, a resource provider and connector. Um, and that really goes in line with your background in hospitality. Talk a little bit about how you talk a little bit. Of, first of all, talk a little bit about what your background is in hospitality and why you've chosen to use that to further where you are today. Thank you for that question. Oh, gosh. So I, I say, you know, when you look at a body, this much of my life has been nonprofit work and the rest of it has been hospitality. Um, 
I graduated from Michigan State with a hospitality business degree after deciding that I didn't want to pursue medical. I was going to do pre-med pediatric cancer research. Um, my fourth year going into Michigan State University, I decided I wanted to do hospitality because I had been working at a, a semi-private golf course in Williamston, Michigan called the Brookshire. And in working there, I felt such happiness and such sense of community and just the joy that food brings to people. It was just so incredible to feel that. And, and going from, you know, doing time in the hospital and, you know, shadowing and just, just time in the hospital working compared to the feeling that I felt when I was in a restaurant or in a place of hospitality was so different. And so I realized for me to have a successful life and, and not to, not to, for me to be happy in my life, this is the change that I'm going to need to make. And so I did that. I ended up graduating in a year and a half after that um, change. So all of my chemistry, inorganic, organic, anatomy, physiology, biology, all became my electives. And I then, you know, started with hospitality track. Luckily, I did have a lot of, um, of other classes in my background as far as, you know, just business in general. So um, I was able to finish fairly quickly. And I just, I loved planning. I love execution of plans. I love connecting the dots of things. And so upon graduation, I moved to Palm Beach, Florida, um, where I lived in West Palm, but I worked in Palm Beach and I worked at a five-star resort called The Breakers. And then I went to work with a three Michelin star chef out of New York. Um, his name is Daniel Ballou, and he operated within a leading hotel of the world, which was the Brazilian court or is the Brazilian court still. Uh, Frederick Fakai was the hairstylist there. So it was really just top-notch everything. And I was planning some of the most wonderful occasions. Um, I got to plan Netscape, uh, the originator of Netscape, who sold to AOL, who you know was, was kind of like the startup of the internet. Uh, I got to plan a party at his house for 40, or really it was 25 of his favorite people, and <laughs> got to go under underground and look at his uh, his caves that are really wine caves that are kept at different temperatures. And he's got a whole software program that he's created for it. It was astonishing. Um, and, you know, to the owner of Google's grandmother's 80th birthday came in to Lally Weymouth, Washington Post. Like I was working with some of the most elite, um, amazing people, but, you know, it was, it was a very high price point. So, you know, there would be nights where it was a $250,000 event. It was a $400,000 event. And that was just for food and beverage. That didn't include entertainment, uh, China, place settings. I mean, any of the upgrades that you wanted, um, florals, all of that was in addition. Um, but I was a coordinator of all of that. So I worked with all of the vendors, which are kind of like my agencies, right? Like our, our vendors or our agencies that serve and bring the services. Um, but now instead of working in that that very large elite population you know mid michigan we do our best to raise fifty five thousand dollars for our competitive grant process here in shiawassee county um we have fallen short of that you know we're for a full year of programming which is only fifty five thousand dollars we haven't met that goal and and i i do believe it's because back in 2016 was when united way was assessed the board was saying okay we're basically upside down right like we're we're in the red so deep because we're not scalable our overhead costs are eating up so much of the the money that we are bringing in and, and the funds that we're bringing in that they were only um allocating to programs twenty thousand dollars a year so the decision was made in 2016, I believe 2015, 2016, we are going to dissolve the heart of Shiawassee, which was the United Way here in Shiawassee County. And United Way in Genesee County is going to absorb the operation. So now it's scalable. We don't have two directors. We don't have two um, admins. We don't have someone outside doing CPA and bookkeeping and accounting. And then the audits that you have to go through and all of the things that it takes to run 
a business because at the end of the day, although it's a nonprofit, it still has to operate as a business and operates at such a higher level of uh, checks and balances and making sure that the funding is going to what it should be going to because we are United Way. So um, we're a four-star charity navigator award winner, which is kind of like a five-star resort, in my opinion, as far as it goes for the nonprofit world. But I really, I found myself at United Way because I was told by some people that you'd be great for this position, your, your experience and your understanding. And I think that my hospitality experience has allowed me to, to bring such a, an exciting perspective to nonprofit world because I see how great connections can be. And at the end of the day, it's about humanity. And we all deserve to be treated with respect, regardless of whether you are the editor in chief of the Washington Post or you are someone who is going to the pantry at Catholic Charities because you need you need this to be able to get through and you need this for your family. And, you know, we all, again, deserve to be um, treated with respect and treated as though our time matters and our our. Um, trials and tribulations matter, right? And everybody has them, regardless if you're a millionaire or you have 10 cents in your, your account, like everyone encounters some sort of struggle. Um, but I'm also not here to judge any of that. I am here simply to try to bring light to the world and try to make as many connections so that we can weave a very strong community base so um, that everyone does feel as though they're supported here. And so with that, with that hospitality background, with that business background that you have and the ability to not just the ability, but the, the passion to help um, people large and small, you are now doing some work or have been doing some work with the Small Business Development Center. Let's talk a little bit about how you were able to weave that into your very busy schedule. What's going on there? Yes. Yeah, so I, I laugh. Um, I've always said my businesses are my children. Uh, I started my first business in 2013 and I just, I've always known, or that was not my first business. That was like my first adult, adult business. But I would say like when I was 16 or 17, I had started swim lesson business. And, um, you know, then I did nails when I was in college. So I had my cosmetology license to be able to do nails and and pedicures and manicures and artificial nails and all that um and i i've always been entrepreneurial both my parents are entrepreneurial and an opportunity came in june of 2020 to accept a contract for region six which is really our thumb region in michigan so we go as far over as shiawassee county and then extend into the thumb um you know port huron and up and all around and all that type of stuff. Caseville, uh, Port Austin, I went to quite often, Bad Axe area. And it was specific for food and beverage because of the experience that I've had with working who I had worked with. And also in two, 2007 and eight, which was when Bernie Madoff annihilated a majority of wealth that was, so it's similar to what, what COVID did to business, Bernie did to our financial sector, right? Like that, that was just like a crash that glass houses were breaking and people were, you know, regrettably taking their lives because they were, they were upside down in their lives because of investments that they tried to make. And during that time, I was, I was challenged by the breakers, the five-star resort to go in and develop a semi-private club that used to be a club court and rebrand it and then sell it as a semi-private club that's an amenity to what they had. So it was like, it was kind of like building a company during a time where no one had the disposable income to join a club. So now we're building a semi-private club that didn't have anything, but we're trying to make it work and, you know, looking at the the bills and, and how many, how many, we, events we were doing and the events were really what was driving the business and allowing it to stay afloat. And so I worked on everything from standard operating procedures to layout, to design of menus, to cost of menus, to everything soup to nuts. So thanks to that, 
I have such an extensive experience and pedigree in food and beverage, in hospitality, and in operations of events and, and just restaurant uh, bar operations that when I applied, I was offered the opportunity to accept a contract. So I'm not an employee, but I'm a contractor with Michigan SBDC. And again, it was specific for food and beverage. Um, come January of 2023 and Shiawassee County and the Shiawassee Economic Development Partnership said, okay, we had someone in our, our county who previously did this, Cheryl Peterson, amazing woman. Um, we actually are one of the very few counties that has a specific SBDC consultant for our county. I don't know of any others that have it. I think most are regional. And so Justin at the SCDP and his organization said, we'll be the holder of the contract for the SED or, or SBDC here at the <laughs> SEDP, all of the acronyms. And they all wow. start with S. <laughs> and so, um, now I get to be a generalist consultant for all businesses. And that goes from purchasing real estate and developing a, a real estate holding company that's one arm of a business. And then also, you know, what's the product or service that you're going to be doing within that resident or within that commercial space? And, and how are you building revenue streams? How are you actually making money? If you're not making money, how do you need to change advertising or marketing? And so, um, I really love the one-on-one -on -one business consulting. And what I love the most about it is that it is a no cost to business owners. So um, that in and of itself, at the end of the day, the success that happens for businesses through this is, you know, strictly their own grit, right? Like we can talk through things and we can work through stuff and we can, we can figure out solutions, but it, it takes implementation and then it takes checks and balances and continuing to make sure that whatever program you want to implement is is happening and continues to happen but that it's meeting the metrics that you're expecting it to and so you know talking through business planning and cash flow analysis and revenue streams and how are you going to pay yourself and what are you know what are the fixed costs insurance you know you, you've got to have your business license you've got to have your incorporations through your Laura, you know, what, it, mm -hmm. what does it look like to structure your company and what type of structure do you want to be an LLC an S corp, a C corp, a nonprofit, um, specifically SBDC does not work with nonprofits. So that is how I do not have conflict of interest mm -hmm. with what mm -hmm. I do. Um, because the SBDC is strictly funded for for profit businesses. Um, nonprofit work. There are uh, plenty of other resources that are available, but Michigan SBDC does not step into the nonprofit world. So um, it's kind of just a beautiful thing. And I, and I started this by saying my businesses are like children. Um, you know, my, my, my clients' businesses are, are, I feel like are my own and I want to see them successful. And I want to see our counties and Michigan in general flourish. You know, I'm, I'm getting ready to go on vacation. And since returning back to Michigan, I want all of my vacations to be in Michigan. I want my money to go back to the state that I love so much and that I was raised in and that I want to see successful because travel and tourism really does drive so much for our region and for our area. And so, you know, getting out and learning what nonprofits are around in your area, getting plugged into volunteerism, you know, going to events. And if you are an entrepreneur, look at different resources that are out there for you to be able to start a business or to grow your business or even to exit, right? Like mm -hmm. that's another thing that the valuation of a business, I've run this for 25 years and, and I think it's worth 275,000, but on books, it's like, you're showing you might be worth 40,000, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, you know, helping, helping people really through what they don't know. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I may not know, but, I sure know that there's somebody who I can call on or there's a resource that I can reach out to because of the relationships that I've been able to build and, and the community that helps to support all of the great things that I get to do. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's neat to, to be here to support not only our nonprofits with what I do through United way, but also through the great work that I get to do through at Michigan SBDC. 
That's awesome. Uh, this has just been amazing, and our time is coming to a close. There's so much more I could talk to you about, but we have time limits. And so how? what is the best way for people to connect with you, uh, whether it's United Way or SBDC? All right, so I've got two emails. Uh, the United Way email is E M A R R A H at United Way Genesee.org. Um, that's U N I T E D W A Y G E N E S E E dot O R G. Um, and then the Michigan SBDC, you'd actually contact me through the SCDP, and that's E M A R R A H. So my first initial and my last name at sedpweb.org so nice. sedpweb.org great thank you thank you thank you very much emily for spending a little bit of time and delving into your history and the passion that you have for the folks that you work with whether it's uh for profit or non-profit which is awesome because you get the best of all worlds i do i do and thank you for doing this your mission control podcast is uh, is really fun to watch, but it's also really informational. So I appreciate you uh, reaching out to me and inviting me to be a part of it. It's really an honor. So thank you. Of course. And thank all of you for taking some time to listen to this program. And please don't miss the next episode coming out in a couple of weeks. And if there's someone that you know, uh, or you know of that you would want to hear more of their journey, uh, please email us at missioncontrol at introduce.com. And if this is your first time here, please subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform and maybe even give us a positive review. review. Please, please like us. <laughs> so thank you again, once again, and we'll see you next time in the Control Center. Take care. Thank you so much, Paul. Yep.